We're going to be starting off on page 203 in the Mark of the Beast, Volume 1. Page 203 in the Mark of the Beast, Volume 1. And we're going to start, we're going to pick up right where the great Kohan left off last week, right in the middle of the page where it talks about the great house of Yahweh. And uh, remember, if you, look at, if you look over on page 202, the caption in boldface writing right there, it says, The Rock. Okay, The Rock. The Rock. So here in the middle of page 203, the house of Yahweh is the pillar and ground of this truth because Yahweh is the head of his house. Okay, Yahweh is the head of this house. And remember, you know, when we're, when we're thinking about Yahweh, we should always be thinking about the scriptures which Yahweh uh, had in, inspired for us, uh, especially the ones like in Isaiah where Yahweh says, I am the only source of power. Okay, I am the only source of power. And when he says, there, is, there will be no gods with you nor uh, now or ever, you know, once Yahweh establishes and, and finishes his complete plan. Okay, there is not going to be any gods with us. We're not going to be serving any gods, but we're going to be serving our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, only. Okay, he is the only source of power. He is the only rock, and he says, I know no other. Okay, there is no other rock outside of Yahweh. So here in 1 Timothy 3, verse 15, it says, But if I tarry long, that thou may... Let me read this out of the book of Yahweh. These always trip me up. But in 1 Timothy 3.15, I'll probably be reading all of the scriptures out of the book of Yahweh tonight. But in 1 Timothy 3.15, it reads, But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know the right and proper way to conduct yourself in the house of Yahweh, who are the called out ones of the living Father, the pillar and ground of the truth. Okay, so we're the called out ones, you know, of the living father. We're in the house of Yahweh. We're in the house of the living father. And remember when the scriptures, it, sa it says, you know, should one seek, uh, what does it say? It says, um, should one seek the living, should one seek, seek the dead on behalf of the living? Okay, should one seek the dead on behalf of the living? You know, it's talking about these people who are serving these, you know, these dead rabbis, these lords, okay, these gods. Okay, so should one cry out to a Lord or a rabbi, you know, seeking the dead on behalf of the living, or should we seek the living Father? Okay, we should be seeking the living Father, Father Yahweh, and he's going to make sure that, you know, all of our needs are taken care of, okay, because he's the one that created this great plan and actually called us to it, okay? And these are some of the things we should consider because this great plan that Yahweh has established, he's allowed us to be a part of it. And when you think about yourselves, I know some of us probably still think like this, Man, Father Yahweh, why did you call me? You know, though we, we should be embracing the work and, and, and moving on in the work, but when we consider ourselves, it's like, man, Father Yahweh, me, why me? And, and this, is a, this is a great blessing that he has called you, that he has called me. And so we should really appreciate, you know, that blessing because, again, not everyone's in Yahweh's house right now. Okay, remember, we're the ones that's being used to bring forth this understanding, to be teachers of this message. We're being trusted or we're going to be entrusted with this message if we qualify. So let's continue reading here. Um, matter of fact, I want to turn to another scripture. And uh, Yachin on Mark. Because the subject that I wanted to speak on just for a second here is the fact that we're in the house of the living Father. Okay, what is that? Yachin on Mark 12. Let me get my bearings, man. Verse 12, chapter 12, verse 27. Oh, and this is a scripture that I was just quoting here. It says, he is not the father of the dead, but the father of the living. Therefore, you are greatly deceived. And this is, uh, if I go up a little bit, this is when Yeshua was, was talking to the men. And uh, let me read here. Verse 24, Yachanah Mark 12, 24 and Yahshua answering them said to them, you are deceived. It is because you know not, you do not know the scriptures, neither the power of Yahweh. And uh, he's talking about the resurrection. And here in verse 26, now concerning the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of the law given through Moshe in the writings about the bush, how Yahweh spoke to him saying, I am the father of Abraham and the father of Isaac and the father of Jacob. He is not the father of the dead, but the father of the living. And so, therefore, you are greatly deceived. So, 
again, okay, again, though, you know, the world they're seeking, you know, requests and they're, they're, they're praying out to these deities, to these dead rabbis who have no authority, have no authority. And this is where Yeshua said, you're deceived. You don't even know the scriptures. You should be crying out to Yahweh, you know, our rock for strength and for support. You know, Yahweh is the one who gives us, gives us this understanding. Let's continue on reading on page 203. The house of Yahweh is founded on the same truth that only Yahweh can reveal. Yahweh's tried and true word. Yahshua is the chief cornerstone of this spiritual building. In Ephesians chapter 220. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Yahshua the Messiah himself being the chief cornerstone. Now think about what we just read here in, in, in pastor's writings. Only Yahweh can reveal. Now remember the situation with Kepha, um, the apostle Kepha, when, when Yeshua asked him, he said, you know, who do you say that I am? And Kepha answered that question. He said, well, you're the Messiah, you know, the son of Yahweh. And then what did Yeshua say to him? He said, you know, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but Yahweh, you know, our father in heaven. Okay, so Yahweh is the one that reveals these things. Okay, just like in these last days, you know, the scriptures show that um, it's through pastor, well, Yeshua opening up the seals and through pastor's teaching that we're able to understand the things that are written in the scriptures. Okay, other men actually, you know, were, were cut off. These things were sealed to them. Daniel was one. And the apostles, you know, there was things that Yeshua even told them, like, it's not for you to know these things. Okay, these things aren't for you to know. Okay, but look at us in these last days. You know, these things are being revealed to us. Okay, we're the ones that's getting this understanding so that we can continue this work, so that we can finish this work of Yahweh. You know, and then to resurrect, you know, our forefathers and, you know, the prophets and the apostles so that they can join into this work so that we can, you know, continue throughout all of eternity bringing forth this message of the kingdom. But again, you know, look at yourselves. You know, you have an awesome opportunity in these last days to be a part of this or the greatest work ever. Okay, the greatest work ever. But there's things that we need to do, and we're going to cover that, Yahweh willing, tonight. Continuing on here, it says, The foundation of the apostles and prophets is Yahweh, as Shaul shows in 2 Timothy 2, verses 19 through 20. He is the foundation the house of Yahweh has today. Or he is the foundation the house of Yahweh has today. This assembly, the called out ones of Yahweh, along with all the righteous called out ones of old, will one day possess the kingdom of Yahweh and rule with, Ye rule with Yeshua at his coming. And remember, you know, not ruling like the uh, scribes and Pharisees and Herodians and so forth, but guiding and teaching, leading people in the right way of Yahweh okay, so that they can know how to conduct themselves. In Revelations, top of page 204, Revelations chapter 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. Okay, so the second death has no power. So if you're in the house of Yahweh and uh, you were taught righteousness, but then you, you turned, turned away from Yahweh's way and decided that, hey, I'd rather sin, that, you know, you're going to be judged for that and you're not going to have any power. Okay, you're not going to have any authority. You know, you, you, you may see death. That's, that's the end of it. But here it says, but they shall be priests of Yahweh and of the Messiah and shall reign with him a thousand years. And this they being the subject here is talking about those who, you know, who kept Yahweh's laws. OK, those who lived according to the faith and those who endured until the very end. This is the they that's underlined right here, not the ones that that's going to be a part of the second death because they're, you know, they're going to die. Okay, They're not going to have any part of the kingdom of Yahweh, but the ones that are alive and, and still living according to the faith will be priests unto Yahweh. This assembly of called out ones will become the priests and kings in the kingdom of Yahweh. They will start their rule after Satan is sealed in the bottomless pit and when all the righteous dead are resurrected. The disciples and Yeshua asked Yeshua if he would restore the kingdom in their day. Yeshua's reply is recorded in Acts chapter 1 verses 6 through 8. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Teacher, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own power. So you see right there, 
you know, it wasn't given to them to know when Yahweh was going to do these things. Uh, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let's keep reading here. But once again, you, just, you can see that, you know, the righteous men of old, the prophets, the, the, the apostles, certain things were not revealed to them. Okay, so imagine the honor that you have in, the, in this time period, you know, having these things being revealed to you. Okay, just think about that. Now, that doesn't mean get all prideful or anything like that. It just means, you know, consider the part of the plan that we're in right now and how important it is for us to get our acts together and continue in this great work and usher in the kingdom that these men died for. Because remember, they were persecuted unto death. You know, we're not persecuted unto death. So it's a, it's, it's a difference. But Yahweh still allows us to, you know, to have this great honor of having the seals open so that we can understand these teachings in these last days. And it's not to be taken lightly. Okay, the, the information that we're understanding in these last days are the things that's going to govern the universe. Okay, think about it. You know, we're going to be priests and kings. We're going to be guiding the entire universe. We're going to be guarding life itself. Okay, this is what we're going to be doing, guarding life. Okay, and Yahweh has to be able to trust us with that. So if we're still fighting each other, you think Yahweh's going to trust us? You know, if we're still acting like we did before we came to the house of Yahweh, is Yahweh going to trust us? He's not. He can. How can he? Okay, so we have to definitely make some changes in our lives. Remember, we're given a greater understanding than a lot of the men of old. Even the ones that wrote things are not understanding the things that, that we're learning in these last days because it's given to pastor to, to teach us these things. OK, I don't know if I can overemphasize that. I'll probably say that a thousand more times tonight before class is over with, because it's that important that we understand that Yahweh has allowed us to understand. OK, he's allowed us to understand. So at this point, you know, it's just a matter of the choices that we make. So what choices are we going to make? You know, what is it that we really want? Do we want the kingdom of Yahweh? That's a question you can answer. Do we want the kingdom of Yahweh? OK, we need to make better choices, right? Not, on, not only in our own lives, but, you know, even in the lives of others, dealing with one another. We need to be inspiring and, and encouraging others on towards perfect and righteous works, period. Period. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power after, after spirit holy has come upon you, and you, shall be, and you shall bear witness unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Yada, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, notice the disciples were not given power to rule over the nations at that time. They were given power to be witnesses about Yahshua throughout the world at that time. This was not political power. This was spiritual power, enabling them to witness the resurrection of Yahshua and to teach the way of Yahweh. Yahshua's promise was that he told that he would be with them in spirit only until the end of this age as a uh, at the end of this age of misrule. Then, at the end of this age, he would come again. The churches of this world are all made up of flesh and blood which cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Okay, so why is that important to understand that the churches of this world are, are all flesh and blood? See, to understand that, you'd have to understand, you know, what the scriptures teach concerning flesh and spirit. What is spirit? Okay, the, the churches aren't teaching people how to, to take on the, the spirit of Yahweh, okay? So what is, what is the spirit of Yahweh? What is this spirit? The laws of Yahweh, right? The laws of Yahweh. Let's, before I continue, let's just quickly rehearse a couple scriptures here. And they're like right next to each other. It's in Romans chapter 7. And we're going to start off in uh, verse 12 here. It says, there, Romans 7, 12 on page 878 in your books of Yahweh. It says, therefore... The law is holy, and the commandments are holy and just and righteous. Verse 14, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I was carnal, sold into the power of sin. Then in verse 16, it says, and if I did what I did not want to do, I agree that the law is righteous. Okay, so what do we have here? We have that the law is righteous, the law is spiritual, and the law is holy. Right, so you have what? You have holy Holy Spirit, or Righteous Spirit Holy, right? Righteous Spirit Holy. If you read from the bottom to the top, Righteous Spirit Holy, and it's all through the law, okay? So through the keeping of Yahweh's law, you will develop Righteous Spirit Holy, right? And remember what the scripture says? It says if you worship Yahweh, you have to worship him in what? 
spirit and truth. You have to worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay, and what is the truth? The laws of Yahweh. Okay, Yahweh's not letting us second guess here or, or, or try to figure out anything. It's written right here for us. Okay, when we keep the laws, we worship him in, in spirit and in truth. We actually develop Yahweh's righteous spirit holy within ourselves when we keep these laws. So is there any mystery in that? There's no mystery. There's no, there's no secret to that. Okay, these secrets are being revealed in these last days. This is what we need to do. But this teaching has been from the very beginning, keeping Yahweh's laws. Okay, it will be our righteousness if we keep these laws. That's always been the teaching. It's always been the teaching. But the churches aren't teaching these things. So how can they be spirit? How can you develop the spiritual man if you aren't taught the things that will allow you to become spiritual? You're not worshiping Yahweh if you're worshiping, you know, if you're worshiping in, you know, in the flesh and blood, you know, being the carnal man. Okay, only through these laws can you see Yahweh and truly serve him. And that's what Pastor's saying here. The churches of this world are all made up of flesh and blood, which cannot inherit the kingdom. They're not bringing forth the teachings that will change the heart and the mind so that a person can even qualify for the kingdom. That's only done here at Yahweh's house, which is established according to prophecy. So here in 1 Corinthians 15, 50, it says, now this, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. Neither does corruption inherit corrupt. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. The fact that flesh and blood cannot be a part of Yahweh's kingdom is absolute proof the churches are not ruling with Yahshua at this time. Only the righteous, dead and Messiah, and those righteous ones still living at Yeshua's coming will, uh, will be changed into spirit beings. These will be the ones who rule with Yeshua in Yahweh's kingdom. Okay? Ruling. Remember, ruling, guiding and teaching, leading. Okay? Showing others, like it says in uh, uh, Isaiah 50, 58, 1, you know, crying loud, sparing not, lifting up your voice like a trumpet. Okay? Remember, Pastor said yesterday, you know, he's our supervisor showing us what to do, right? He's showing us what to do. He's teaching us how to teach others what he's teaching us. So are we not also going to be out crying loud, sparing not, showing people their sins, teaching them how to change their life? Showing them that, no, this is not the way. He said, uh, as soon as a person thinks about sin or, or does something wrong, we're going to be there. Just like that, saying, look, you know, this is the way. Walk ye in it. And at that time, all of the history you know, uh, of the earth or what took place on earth is going to flood their minds. You know, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. Okay, this is how quick we're going to be on those things. You know, they're making sure that we guard life, not allowing sin to enter in. Next paragraph here says, no, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 53. Behold, I show you a, let me read it out of the book of Yahweh, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. 51 through 53. Behold, I show you a secret truth. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and, will, and we will be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this moral, oh, excuse me, this mortal must put on immortality. Okay, but you see some of the key words here in, a, in verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. Okay, so who's the last trumpet? Pastor. pastor. Okay, pastor's the last trumpet. Okay, and it says here, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. Okay, when we were out in the world, were we alive in Yahweh or were we dead? dead. We were dead. Remember what Yeshua said? He said, you know, when the man asked him, hey, can I go and bury my father? What did Yeshua say? Let the dead bury the dead. Okay, let the dead bury the dead. So when we weren't in Yahweh's house, we were dead. We were nothing in the eyes of Yahweh, just like uh, Enoch was, remember? You know? For like, I think it was the first 65 years, he was nothing in the eyes of Yahweh. Not like Yahweh didn't have compassion or, or anything like that, but he wasn't a righteous man. We weren't righteous men. We were dead in the faith. Okay, but when we came to Yahweh's house, you know, we started to live. Okay, so we passed from death to life. Okay, so 
And that's because of what? That's because the trumpet was sounding, right? The trumpet was sounding. He was lifting up his voice, showing us where we were wrong. He was showing us our sin. And because of his teachings, we are now alive in Yahweh's house, you know, qualifying for positions in Yahweh's kingdom, okay? With the sound of this trumpet, okay? And that's a secret truth. Do you believe it? <laughs> Praise Yahweh. You know, because we are changing. You know, each individual person here is proof that Yahweh's way work, or we wouldn't be here tonight. We wouldn't be here doing the work during the week. We wouldn't be here on the Sabbath. We wouldn't be here at the feast. But Yahweh's way work, and we're proving it by changing our lives every single day, making better choices every single day so that we can be fit for the kingdom. If we didn't care about that, we wouldn't be here. Okay? And this is why we need to work together. Okay? Everyone here wants to be in Yahweh's kingdom, but we still have some rough edges, don't we? <laughs> well, forgive your brother what once, twice. Praise Yahweh. Right? Your forgiveness should be abounding. Let's continue reading here. It says here in uh, the top of page 205 in the caption, it says, before Yeshua returns. Well, let me check something real quick. Okay. Okay, praise God. It says, before Yeshua returns. According to scripture, it is a myth that Yeshua could return to earth at any time. So y'all remember that, right? The Lord can come for you tonight, brother. <laughs> y'all remember that stuff? Yeah, no, it's a lie. You know, Yeshua's not just going to return any time. What is he going to do, like sneak out of Yahweh Shema, creep down to earth and start trying to save people? That's not the plan of Yahweh. The prophecies has to be fulfilled, okay? That's the plan of Yahweh. Yeshua's not going to do anything to alter the plan of Yahweh. He said what? I of myself can do nothing, okay? I do the will of he who sent me. So Yeshua is not just going to return just because he's tired of waiting, okay? He trusts in Yahweh. He knows that when he's sent, that's when he's going to come. He's not just going to show up. So those things are lies. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. Until he shall, until he shall send Yeshua the Messiah who has been previously appointed for you, whom the heaven must retain until the time of res restoration of all things which Yahweh has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the beginning of the ages. So you see, first, Yahweh is going to send Yahshua, but until then, the heavens must retain him. So here, Pastor writes, must retain until. This means Yahshua must stay in heaven until the time the kingdom of Yahweh will be reconstituted on earth. Yahweh's plan from the beginning was for Yeshua to come to die for our sins, then be received into heaven for a time. And so what's Yeshua doing in heaven right now? Learning how to run a kingdom. He's still learning at the foot of Yahweh, at the feet of Yahweh. Learning and preparing. Well, preparing what? Preparing a place for us. Remember, he says, I'm preparing a place for you. So Yeshua is not just up there relaxing. He's doing a great work. Okay, and remember, he's inspiring He's inspiring this work in these last days, working with our pastor, you know, so that we can gain this great understanding that no one else had, okay, that no one else has, okay. This is great understanding that Yahweh reserved, he reserved these things for us, okay, and this is something to be thankful for, exceedingly glad and rejoice for, okay. We read a scripture in class, in one of the classes yesterday, and it just jumped in my mind, and I, I want to read that right now. I want to read it right now. It's in Romans chapter 8. It's in Romans chapter 8. And I'm only going to read, um, I guess I'll read, I'll just start at 18. Romans 8, 18. It says, for, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which will be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation waits for the revealing of the sons of Yahweh. For the creation was made subject to emptiness, not willingly, but by the will of him who subjected it in hope. Okay, so the reason I wanted to read that is because, again, all of creation, life itself is waiting for the revealing of us, the sons of Yahweh. Okay, and so here in verse 18, it says, but the sufferings of this present time, they're not worthy to be compared to the glory which is going to be revealed in us. So the men that were in class yesterday, they, you know, 
we talked about this a lot longer than what I'm going to do tonight. But in a nutshell, you know, what we were discussing is, you know, the things that we're going through can't compare to what Yahweh has in store for us. Okay, everything that we're going through is for our refinement, okay, to make sure that we're fit for the kingdom. And this is how we should look at it. We should rejoice when we take a test and then we pass it, okay? And if we fail a test, okay, then what do you do? You're not going to study, you're going to give up? Ah, well, forget it. No, if you want the kingdom of Yahweh, you're going to examine yourself, you're going to find out, okay, so where did I go wrong? And then you're going to strengthen yourself in the knowledge of Yahweh, and then when that test comes upon you again, you're going to pass it if you want to be a part of Yahweh's kingdom. And so the tests that we go through, you know, aren't to break us, aren't to kill us. No, these are to make us fit for the kingdom, and that's how we have to look at it, okay? And we also need to understand that the system that's governing this world is not a righteous system, okay? The system that governs this world doesn't work, okay? Look at how we struggle, okay? Is it fair that anyone should struggle in the manner that we struggle? It's not fair. Yahweh's way is not like that. You know, look at how Solomon governed his kingdom and how, how the lowest servant wouldn't give up his position, Okay, remember the scripture says Solomon made silver as abundant as the stones in the streets in Jerusalem. Okay? And not that it's just about money, but it's talking about the needs of the people were met. Look at the amount of food that it took to feed the people in the kingdom. Okay? And these are things that we're going to be over, making sure that the needs of the people are met. Okay? So the things that we're going through right now, okay, deal with it. I'm not trying to sound harsh. You know, we're all under the same, you know, we're all being tested and tried. Okay? But we have to deal with it. Why? Because we can see the kingdom, right? Can you actually see the kingdom? You should be able to see the kingdom. Praise Yahweh. And if you can see the kingdom, then what difference does these other things really matter? Except for your perfection. So we should be using these tests and trials as that. You know, tools to come to perfection. And not cry about these things, but rejoice that Yahweh, is, he's even allowing us to be tested. You know, we pay tithe, right? What? One? Two? Sometimes three, right? <laughs> and the people that we work with pay nothing. They pay nothing. And they're not blessed. You know, they're not blessed for so many reasons. And one is because they don't even know that, that you know, Tithing actually prepares us for showing care and concern, true love for someone else. Okay? So what if you're a little broke? You know, if money's a little tight? You know, you're showing love and concern for someone else. That's the important thing. We're being like the woman with the widow's mites, right? We're being like the woman who had, you know, gave out of her living to offer up to Yahweh what was his. And didn't complain about it. Didn't complain about it. Okay, and this is, these are the examples that we need to, you know, to follow, to continue in. You know, we're the ones that's the finishing work of this great plan. So remember, Yeshua said, our righteousness has to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Okay, it has to. You know, we have to surpass that. Continuing on here. It was taught by many prophets that before the second coming of Yeshua, this world would be in total disruption. There would be no peace at all upon this planet. When Yeshua returns as king of kings and ruler of rulers, he will abolish all the human misrule and establish the kingdom of Yahweh to rule this earth for 1,000 years. Yeshua gave his disciples a parable to explain this great future event. In Luke chapter 19, verses 11 through 27. Luke chapter 19, verses 11 through 27. And this is the parable of the nobleman and the, I guess you would pronounce that, Minas. Verse 11. And as they heard these things, he spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of Yahweh would immediately appear. So here's their mindset. Okay, they're, they're working under Yeshua. And, and as they're listening to Yeshua's teaching, they're excited like, oh, these are the last days. You know, the kingdom of Yahweh is going to appear and Yeshua is going to, you know, restore the kingdom and the priests. And now we're going to run things. Okay, these, this is how they were thinking, okay? So the apostles actually thought that they were you. <laughs> Verse 12. So he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country and received a kingdom for himself 
then to return. So he called ten of his servants, handed them ten minas, over, handed ten minas over to them, and said to them, Do business with this while I am gone. However, his citizens who hated him sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want to have this man reign over us. But when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then condemned these servants, he commanded these servants to be summoned to him, to whom he had given the minas, that he might know how much each man had gained by trading. So the first, so the first came, saying, Ruler, your mina has gained ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, faithful servant, because you are trustworthy over a very little, you will have authority over ten cities. Okay, so you see there, he brought back ten minas. And so with that, Yeshua, or in the parable here, he received ten cities. So let's continue reading here. And the second came and said, Ruler, your mina has gained five minas. And he said to him, You will also be over five cities. But another came, saying, Ruler, behold, here is your mina, which I have kept stored away in a piece of cloth. <laughs> Verse 21, he said, I feared you because you were a harsh man. You collected what you did not deposit and reaped what you did not sow. So he said to him, out of your own mouth, I will judge you, wicked servant. You knew that I was a harsh man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank so that my so that so at my coming I might have collected it with interest? Then he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. But they said to him, ruler, he already has ten minas. And I say and I say to you, to everyone who has will be given. But from him who has not, even that which he had will be taken away from him. Now, as for those enemies of mine who did not want to, who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them before me. So that parable should easily be understood. We have a man, you know, who was given, you know, given a, a work to do. Okay, he was given a work to do, and he increased in that work. Okay, he did the work, and because of what he did, he was given authority over other things. The other servant also did the same thing. You know, he was given a talent, he was given work to do, and he brought forth fruits, okay? And so he was given authority to, to, to teach and to guide and to, to govern five cities. But the ones that didn't do any work, that didn't do any work, there, what they had was taken from them. And they were called wicked servants. It's like, oh, well, this is what you gave me. But you didn't you didn't do anything. You know, you came to the south office, bought a book of Yahweh. You didn't even open it up and read it. And now you're going to give it back to me. You didn't study free literature. You didn't read. You didn't do anything. And you want me to give you a city, five cities, 10 cities. You want you want a reward and you didn't even prepare yourself to be a blessing to someone else. You don't know what to do. How can you help someone? You are a wicked servant. Wicked servant. Let's continue reading here on page 206. In this parable, the nobleman, the nobleman refers to Yeshua. The far country is heaven. The servants are the ones who have been called out and who will be called out by Yahweh. The kingdom he is to receive is the kingdom of Yahweh. With this parable in mind, let us read a prophecy in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came, to a, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given, let's read it out of the book of Yahweh, Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. And what was that, 13 and 14? I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they were brought together before him. And there was given him ruling authority and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should obey him. His government is an everlasting government which will not pass away, and his kingdom 
is one which will not be destroyed. Okay, so here's an everlasting kingdom that's being given to Yahshua, okay, that's being offered to us if we take the talents that's giving us, you know, and, and bring forth fruit, you know, and increase, okay, grow in this knowledge, okay? We can't be like the wicked servant and not do anything. We can't be, you know, asleep in Yahweh's house. You know, remember Jacob again, you know, he was asleep, but then he awoke from his sleep and realized that what? This was none other than the house of Yahweh. Okay, this is none other than the house of Yahweh. This is the entranceway, the gateway to the kingdom of Yahweh. Okay, only through the house of Yahweh are we going to enter into Yahweh's kingdom. So we can't be in Yahweh's house not doing the work. Okay, we cannot be wicked servants. We have to bring forth an increase. Okay, we have to bring forth an increase or we're not going to be profitable. Okay, we just read that in one parable here, but there's many scriptures that show. Matter of fact, there's another scripture. It's in, uh, it's in Uremia that says, Cursed is he who does the work of Yahweh without diligence. Cursed is he who does the work of Yahweh without diligence. Okay, so we have to be diligent in everything that we put our hands to do because, again, this is for our training, for our refining so that we can be fit for the kingdom, so that we can guard and protect life itself. Man, we're, we have a serious calling here. And this is a serious calling because Yahshua's, he's going to have a kingdom that's never going to be destroyed. And we can be a part of that. Okay, we can be the ones that resurrect the, the, the men of old. We can be those ones, you know, ushering in the everlasting kingdom of Yahweh, ushering in everlasting righteousness and peace. Who does not want to be a part of that? Who doesn't want to be a part of that? Okay, the wicked, because they don't understand. Okay, they don't understand, but we understand, you know, because of this great plan of Yahweh. Continuing on here, it says, Shaul, speaking of Yeshua's return, wrote in 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 1 through 3. Okay, so 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Now we plead with you, brothers, concerning the coming of our King, Yahshua Messiah, and our gathering together with him, that you, not, that you not soon be shaken in mind, nor be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as if from us, as the day of Yahweh is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless there comes a falling away first, and that servant of sin is revealed, the son of perdition." Are we still in the dark about who the scriptures are talking about there? No. He's been revealed to us. Okay? He's been revealed. Okay? But there was a time when the son of perdition hadn't been revealed, right? But now, you know, we can see that gap from the beginning to the end starting to close up because of fulfilled prophecy, right? So we know who the son of perdition is. The, 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 the tribulation, the, the seven-year peace accord, and so on and so forth. We see this gap closing to the end. So we're paying attention. We're watching as the day of Yahweh draws near. Now, who's afraid, that, who's afraid of the day of Yahweh? No, we're not. We're not afraid. We're, we're longing for it, okay, because we know that things are going to change because we're being trained in righteousness, and we're going to be the ones who are not going to take bribes, okay? We're not going to judge, you know, uh, harshly. You know, we're not going to corrupt justice, Okay? We're going to rule just like Yeshua rules. We're going to rule just like pastors teaching us, you know, in righteousness and in peace, okay? in mercy and compassion. Continuing here on the top of page 207. That day, that day is the day of the second coming of Yeshua. The man of sin is the same man Daniel prophesied of in Daniel chapter 7, verses 23 through 25, who speaks great words against the Most High, Wears out the saints of the Most High, changes laws and festivals until the very end of this age. This great man who has Satan's power must be revealed to the world for what he really is. Is that taking place? It's taking place. You know, Pastor not holding back any punches. You know, he's not saying, you know, and the, and the son of perdition is, and then covering up the mic and whispering it. No. He's speaking loudly. In fact, on the radio today, you know, it was, it was like he just kept on saying, you know, the Pope, the Pope, the Pope, the Pope, the Catholic Church, the whole day. It's all I heard. 
Okay, so pastors, he's not scared. He's doing his job. He's not scared to do his job. Okay, you know why? Because Yahweh is with him. Praise Yahweh. <laughs> Yahweh told him exactly what it is that he needs to do, and he's doing it. Okay, is he scared to talk about the Masons? As a matter of fact, he was talking about the Masons also today on the radio. Did anyone hear these sermons today? Yeah, he was telling them, you know, how Herod was using them to do a certain work. He's not scared. There's no need to be scared because Yahweh is his rock. Okay, so he's doing his job making sure that he's revealing, you know, the person who's causing people to sin, who's teaching these people to sin. Okay, here, let's continue reading. It says, uh, I'm going to start in that paragraph again. It says, this great man who has Satan's power must be revealed to the world for what he really is. This must be done in these last days by those whom Yahweh is calling out. This is the duty of the house of Yahweh, and this must be fulfilled before Yahshua's return. So once again, we see this being done, right? So you can see that the end is drawing closer because more prophecies are being fulfilled. Here in Matthew 24, 14, you know, uh, I don't have the most accurate translation of the scripture, but uh, it, show, it says that uh, and the glad tidings of this message of the, the perfect kingdom based on perfect laws will be preached by the witness unto all nations, and then the end will come. I think it's more in it than that, but the point is, you know, the message of the kingdom, you know, the perfect laws of that kingdom has to be, you know, presented to the world. It has to be preached and published to the world. Is that taking place? Yeah. Okay, prophecies being fulfilled. Mark chapter 13, verse 10, and the glad tidings must first be published among all nations. It's being published, all right, preached and published. Micaiah 4, 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the, the mountain of the house of Yahweh shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above all hills, and all people will flow to it. Now, has, that, has all of that occurred yet? Not all of it. Part of it's occurred. You know, eventually all people will flow to the house of Yahweh. Okay? But that's going to be from our continual training and, and teaching. And eventually the knowledge of Yahweh is going to be... You know, it's going to cover the entire earth. Remember, everyone's going to have this knowledge of Yahweh, and they're going to serve Yahweh eventually. Okay, so, you know, we have a, a, a great work ahead of us, but the house of Yahweh has been established in these last days, so that prophecy has been fulfilled. And in 1 Timothy 3.15, but if I tarry long, we know it says, I write that, thy, that thou might knoweth, <laughs> I'm going to read it out of here, <laughs> that thou mayest, Mayest, no. No, I'm not reading it out of there. I'm going to have to read it out of the book of Yahweh. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> In 1 Timothy 3.15, But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know the right and proper way to conduct yourself in the house of Yahweh, who are the called out ones, the house of the, the, the called out ones of the living Father, the pillar and ground of the truth. Once again, you're the called out ones of the living Father. Okay, and this is the pillar and the ground of the truth. Okay, again, the truth is they are the laws of Yahweh, the keeping of the laws of Yahweh. That's what the truth is. Okay, so when the, when the churches are talking about the truth, they're lying because they don't even know what the truth is. Remember what it says in uh, Isaiah 8.20? Okay, if they speak not according to the laws and the prophecies, then there is no light in them. There's no, so what is the light? The laws. The laws. Psalms, what is it? Psalms 119, uh, 105, and 130, I think it is. Okay? Easy. The laws are light. First Yachanan chapter 1, verse 5 says that Yahweh is light, and in him there is no darkness. Okay, there's no deception in Yahweh. Yahweh says, look, my laws are light. They will, they will light or illuminate the way that you should go. Okay, and when you see these laws, you will see the right and proper way to conduct yourself in the house of the living father. And this is the knowledge that we have to teach to all mankind so that they too may know how to conduct themselves and live. Okay? That's why it's so important that we come to classes. You know, every class that we can come to, we need to come to classes so that we can learn what to teach. Praise Yahweh. We have to learn what to teach because this is the only way that we're going to be able to change the hearts and the minds of mankind. Okay, and, and again, it's not going to be us as individuals, but it's going to be the teachings that we use, the teachings that we've been taught, which are the words of Yahweh that he's entrusting us with to be a blessing to someone else. Okay, this is the glory that's going to be revealed in us 
Okay, like we read in Romans 18, and this is what all of creation is waiting for, us to be able to, to establish this kingdom and then to go out and to teach these things. They're going to rejoice when you show up, men. They're going to rejoice. Continuing on on page 207, it says, not universally expected. It says, Yeshua plainly shows his second coming will not be expected by most of the world. Okay, but the, the people are going to be worshiping who? What are they going to continue to worship? You know, they're going to continue to worship the lords, the God, you know, the gods. They're going to continue to be celebrating Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day, Fourth of July, all of these things that they're doing. Why? Because the scripture shows that the minds of the people are blinded, you know, blinded by the God. So they cannot see this message of the Messiah. They can't see these wonderful teachings of how we can turn from death, from disobedience and sin, and live a life of righteousness and peace. They don't see these things. Okay, the message of the Messiah, they're blinded to it. Okay, that's in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 4. Okay, and you can read that from verses 1 through 4. Okay, this message, they're blinded, uh, they're blinded by the gods of this world, so they can't see the truth of the Messiah. Okay, and this is why they fight against the Messiah. This is why they fight you know, against the house of Yahweh, because they, they think that we're evil because we're, we're speaking against what they've been taught to believe in, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving and, and all of these things. Okay. They're deceived to the point where, you know, they know that a rabbit can't lay eggs, but they worship it anyway. They do it anyway, even though the scripture says not to. Okay. This is the power of deception. Okay. And remember, we all believe, if not all of that, we believe some of it. You know, maybe some of us didn't do Christmas. Maybe some of us didn't eat pork, but there were some things that we did, and we believed strongly in those things. And look at how Yahweh broke through that and allowed us to be here in these last days. He's going to do it again, you know, but we, uh, the world, we all have to learn this valuable lesson of what life is like without Yahweh's laws. You know, what is life without Yahweh? And so we've been blessed with an opportunity to actually keep Yahweh's laws and to understand and to bear witness against, the, uh, against this time period and its wickedness. Okay, we have, we have the opportunity to bear witness against this time period. And, uh, Pastor also writes here about those who will be expecting Yahshua are the ones who are the elect of Yahweh. And you remember how you are the elect of Yahweh? You're the elect of Yahweh by, by tethering yourself to the choices branch, by tethering yourself to the elect of Yahweh. Okay, pastor cannot be deceived. Okay, he cannot be deceived. And if you listen to him, if you follow his teachings, you cannot be deceived. Okay, it's only when we go outside of pastor's teaching when we open ourselves up to deception. But we're not going to be deceived by a pastor. OK, remember, Yahweh is light and there's no deception in him. And he said, this is my witness. OK, this is my witness, Israel. And he's going to bring perfection to his house. There's no deception in that. So if we hold on to that, you know, we're the elect of Yahweh. OK, we're going to be the elect of Yahweh. We are the elect of Yahweh. In Revelations 14, verse 4. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, the first, fruit, the first fruits unto Yahweh and to the lamb. The word women in Revelation 14, 4 is word number 1135 in Strong's Concordance, and is from the base word 1096, which means forbidden assemblies. These, are the, these ones keep the commandments of Yahweh. In Revelations 14, 12, I want to read this out of the book of Yahweh also, but it says here, at this time will the faith of the saints be tested. They that keep the commandments of Yahweh and, they, and have the faith of Yahshua. Okay, so in the book of Yahweh, that scripture reads in uh, 14, 12, In this manner are the saints purified by keeping the laws of Yahweh in conformity with the faith as Messiah. Okay, so this is how we're purified, through the keeping of Yahweh's law, okay, in unity with the faith, just like Yeshua did. Remember, Yeshua said, therefore, you must become perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, being in unity in the faith. Okay, keeping these same laws, this is how we are purified. This is how we are made holy and acceptable unto Yahweh. This is how we qualify for positions in Yahweh's kingdom to be a blessing to other people. Continuing in the pastor's writings, it says that the, the other ones, 
the ones whose names are not written in the book of life, will worship Satan as Lord Jesus. Okay? They will worship Satan as Lord Jesus. Right? You know, remember, we're coming up into that time of year where you're going to start seeing these nativity scenes. You know, I'm glad we live in an area where people don't come around caroling. Okay? That would, that would really bother me. So, praise Yahweh, we don't have to deal with that stuff. But you have people going around, you know, doing these things, worshiping Satan, you know, not knowing that they're worshiping Satan, but calling upon their Lord God, you know, Jesus Christ, you know. But again, <laughs> we're going to be the ones that show. We are the ones that's bringing forth the truth about the Messiah in these last days. In Luke 21, verses 35 through 36, I'm reading it out of the book of Yahweh. Luke, Luke 21. Did I say 24? Luke 21, 35, 36. Okay, it says here, For it will come like a trap on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Because of this, watch and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Okay, so we're paying attention to the things that are taking place in the world. And he's saying, you know, watch. Pay close attention to these things so that we can be found worthy. I want to read, I want to read something to you here. Okay, I want to read something to you. Because there's an important aspect of the plan of Yahweh that we have to accomplish in these last days. Okay? Now I said that like you're like I'm about to tell you something that you never heard. But you've heard this before. Okay? You've heard this before. In Yakanah chapter 15, on page 832. I want to start at verse 9 here. And this is a very important aspect of the completion of the plan of Yahweh. It says, just as the Father has loved me, so I love you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, then you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's laws and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be complete. Did you hear that word there, complete? Did everyone hear that? Okay, does it make sense? I'm going to keep reading here a little bit because it's, Yeshua is going to thoroughly explain to us what's going on here. But I, I wanted to make sure that you heard that word, complete. Because what part of the plan are, are, are we in right now? We're doing the finishing part, right? We're completing the plan of Yahweh, right? This is the completion of the plan of Yahweh. So remember that word here. He says, I have spoken these things to you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be complete. Okay, this rejoicing, okay, this great joy. Okay, so let's read here. It says, this is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Man, we in trouble, aren't we? Great day. We have to love one another? Are you kidding me? Yeshua, can, can you, like, tell me to bathe in the yard or something like that seven times or something? Do I actually have to love my brother? <laughs> Praise Yahweh. Yes. Praise Yahweh. Okay. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Yes, we do have to love our brothers. And let me tell you the benefit of this. Well, let me read to you the benefit of this. This is what Yeshua said here. In verse 13, greater love has no one than this, that one would lay down his life on behalf of his brother. Now, the footnote here at the bottom let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay, here it is. It says, to lay down one's life on behalf of one's brother means to devote one's entire life to one's brothers in the faith. Okay, to devote one's entire life to one's brother in the faith. Okay, learning how to be a servant, learning how to be a blessing to your brother. Okay, this is what Yeshua is saying. But Yeshua is not done here because there's a great benefit that comes from learning how to truly love your brother. Here it says in verse 14, you are my brothers if you do whatever I command you. Now, he just said this is my commandment, right, that you love one another as I have loved you, right? So he says you are my brothers. Yeshua says you are his brothers if you do whatever I command you. Now, here's the great understanding. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his ruler is doing. But I have called you brothers because everything that I have learned or heard from my father, I have made known to you. Okay, this is given to the brothers of the faith. Okay, so if we're having a problem understanding the teachings, maybe we need to get a little bit more love for one another in our lives. Okay, 
That's a great secret of Yahweh. It's a family of Yahweh. Okay, we have to be brothers in this faith. If we're not brothers, then we're not brothers to Yahshua. Okay, now if we are brothers to Yahshua, then we're brothers to one another, then we're going to have this great understanding. And then, like it says up here, our joy might be complete. And what's that joy? What's that hope that we have? The coming of Yahweh's kingdom. Okay, the coming of Yahweh's kingdom. Okay, but it's contention upon us showing love to one another. That's one of the things that we have to fulfill. Oh, did the kingdom get that much further away from us? We have to fulfill that. Okay, we have to fulfill that. Remember these things. These are Yeshua's words. Okay, and look, this is what Yeshua said here. You have not chosen me. Okay, because we're still running around saying Jesus or, or Yeshua or Yehishahu or whatever. Okay, we were saying whatever, but we were not using the name of Yahweh or Yahshua. It was taken from us until Yahweh called us to his house and gave us permission to call upon him and to request things of him in righteousness and for righteous reasons. Okay, so here it says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and produce fruit. Here's 10 minas, Yahshua. Hope you will be over 10 cities. Oh, this is what you gave me, Yahshua. I wrapped it in cloth. <laughs> well, that's funny to you. Okay. Wicked, wicked servant. Wicked servant. Okay, go and produce much fruit. And that your fruit should remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he shall give it to you. These things I command you. Okay, what does command mean? It means to teach. These are the things that I've been teaching you. These are the things that have been taught from the very beginning. Okay? These are the things that I command you. These are the things that I teach you so that you may love one another. Okay? Praise Yahweh. We're going to stop there, man. Okay? It would be to our advantage if we rehearse that all the time and apply what Yeshua is trying to show us to do every single opportunity we get. Okay? Every opportunity we get. Okay? We're going to stop there. What page are we on? Page 208. Okay, where it says Yeshua compared the day of his return to the days of Noah. Man, once again, I want to encourage you to apply these teachings in your life so that, uh, so that we can usher in a kingdom. Okay, Yeshua said, you know, the world are going to know who we are by the love we show one another. So we need to truly, you know, put it in gear and show, you know, Yeshua, show Yahweh, show each other that we truly love one another by laying down our lives to be great teachers and being examples and encouraging one another on towards perfect righteousness. May Yahweh bless your understanding.